there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got some fun in store for you today a little bit of DIY coming your way so what are we waiting for let's get started today we'll be working on some spring farmhouse home decor let's get started with project number one for this project from Dollar Tree I'm going to be using this big uh, tag shaped sign here this little truck came from Walmart. I just like how it looked better. I know Dollar Tree has some ones. It's about $1.49. I'll be using these pack of wood carrots and these pack of bunnies. And that little chalkboard clip tag comes in a set of four from Dollar Tree. Bunnies and carrots, of course, from Dollar Tree. And then this little picture frame from Dollar Tree as well. If you don't have that tag shape thing they have these new signs at Dollar Tree would look totally cute I went back and forth but in the end I wanted a tag shape so I'm using my heat tool here and a Cricut tool as well to kind of pop off that chalkboard section and to remove the beads of glue underneath that held that little chalkboard sign on and then off camera go ahead and just sand around the edges of the sign there a little bit where the paper is so that that doesn't show on our project and then i'm going to use my heat tool and a cricut tool again cricut spatula i guess because it's a nice thin spatula and just gently kind of slide underneath those fender wells there and get those off of there of course we'll be using them again but I, it'll be easier to paint and stuff with those off and I'm going to go ahead and just take the hardware off of this photo frame and set that aside for the very end of our project. Here's what my tag looks like all sanded. And I cut a piece of paper off camera to fit one side and some black cardstock to finish off the back on the other side. I cut it about a quarter inch all the way around. This is the paper I'm going to use for my truck. I'm going to lay my truck down and I'm going to, of course, trace around it here. And before you trace, you need to decide which way your truck's going to face. So the front of my truck on our project is going to face to the left. So, of course, I'm making sure that I trace my truck with the front facing to the right. And then I'm placing my little fenders back on so I can mark out the wheels here. That's going to help us later. And then I'm going to come back in about an eighth of an inch from the edge that I traced and draw a new pattern perimeter line. Okay, up and around those wheels and everything and that's what I'm going to cut out that way when it's done it's going to be a little bit shorter than the wood truck and you're going to be able to see that wood perimeter all the way around just like I did for the papers on the tag of course that's how it's going to look in the end okay here's what you can see how it'll look and I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary DIY Little Black Dress Dixie Bell Drop Cloth Paint Mud Paint and sage and Dixie Belle terracotta paint for my project today, all chalk paints. I'm gonna use the black and kind of uh, paint around my tag here. So yeah, if you use that one newer sign, you wouldn't have to paint any of it unless you wanted to stain like the framing around it would look really cute. And just painting around the edges and I'm gonna go ahead and paint while I've got the black paint out and paint my wheels here on my truck. I think this turned out really, really cute. I like how it uh, ended up. So you'll have to let me know if you guys like it too. And then I'm using that Dixie Belle drop cloth paint going around the perimeter because remember a little bit of the wood's going to show around the edges since we cut our paper short. And you don't have to cut the paper short, but I just like to do that. I just like that little bit of texture, being able to see a little bit of wood around it, around the paper. Okay, and then I'm going ahead and of course painting my little fenders here. Am I saying the right word? For some reason, fenders doesn't sound right. <laughs> painting my little bunny, although later I end up painting it a pink color, but that's okay. And then before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little sandpaper here because it kind of gets real messy, and I'm going to sand and distress those wheels up a little bit. All that black around it will get covered up. And I'm coming in with like just some gray paint here and just painting the little center of my wheels. But that gray... Um, it just kind of looks like a silver a little bit, so it works perfectly. I don't remember which color I'm using, but I know it's Dixie Belle chalk paint. <laughs> now I'm going to come in with that terracotta paint, and I'm going to paint up my carrots. You all know we've been painting carrots for how many videos now? Orange on the bottom. We'll paint a little green on the top. Just having fun with these carrots. I don't know. And yes, we're going to have a truck bed full of carrots. You know it. Here comes the greenery part. Perfect, looking really, really cute. And I'm going to use a stylus. Now, I start out here putting little uh, dots, white dots, or the drop cloth dots on my carrots. 
And then I decide later off camera, I don't like that. I just, you know, the last few videos I've been doing like a tone on tone, like a darker orange over the orange. And as I, you know, saw these, I'm like, I just don't like that. So I end up repainting off camera the backside, redoing the whole carrots and putting orange dots on it. You'll see that later how it turned out. I didn't feel the need to show you me painting them again because we're already seeing that here. Added a little bit of shading on the green for the carrot top. And now we're kind of sanding around all our carrots to make them look all distressed. And then I'm coming in with my sewing machine and I'm sewing around all the edges of my paper. Those of you new to my channel, I love to do this. I just think it adds really cute texture to my project. So if you're not a sewer, no worries. You don't have to do this. It's just personal preference. If you are a sewer and you like this, I find anywhere from a size 9 or 10 or 11 needle, you'll have to play with it a little bit, works best. I use a 10 or 11 on mine, but some people have come to me and said the holes are too big, so I suggested they use a 9. Um... And then once all the sewing's done, I'm coming in with the edge of my scissor blades and I'm scraping along the edges just to add even further texture. If you're not a sewer, this is an easy thing to do to add some texture to it. You can see how the sewing looks on my truck here, really cute. Yeah, and I, my stitch length set on four. I have a little cheapy machine, that's the longest stitch length. Tension set on four and just sew on it like it's regular fabric. I'm gonna be using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today for all my projects and we'll start gluing some of our papers down. At this point, if you look to the right there, you can still see my carrots have the white dots, but you know, never fear, that'll get changed here really quick. Here we go, putting our paper down. I think this turned out nice and kind of vintage looking. Um, I water down some of that drop cloth paint and then I'm using my fan brush. I dip it in the paint, kind of wipe off the extra, and then I tap my brush to add little splatters over everything. I'm going to go ahead and cover the back of my tag here so it's nice and finished off. And then the print paper will be for the front of my tag. Yeah, the papers I chose just ended up looking really vintage looking and I kind of like it. And then we'll go ahead and add the fenders back over our wheels here. And then I'm gonna use these I got at Dollar Tree. I picked them up for the purpose of being able to use them. Like I put it in between the truck there so that I could lift up our little chalkboard tag, using it for layers to lift things up. Here's the back of my carrots, what they used to look like. Here's what they look like now. I like them much better. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue like three carrots down. I kind of looked where I was gonna place my truck. And then two carrots in the center of those three carrots. So I have a little bunch of carrots here, of course. Cute, cute, cute. And then we're coming back to these little squares. I thought these would be great to help layer things. Because those carrots, two layers of those carrots, the truck is not going to sit even. So I took three squares each of these tags, made two piles, glued them together. And then we're going to place them down where the truck's going to go. We're going to glue that to our tag, glue a little bit on the carrots, some onto our wood squares. You could use cardboard or something here if you don't have these. And then set our truck right on top and then our truck will lay level around and over those carrots. And then here's my bunny. I painted all pink and then did a little white splatter on it. And we're gonna go ahead and glue that down right onto our little uh, chalkboard tag there. And then I've got a big, big washer here. I'm gonna use that around the circle of the tag. And then this is what I cut out in vinyl. I will have a PDF for you and a PNG file. Uh, link will be in my blog. So you can go if you wanna cut it in vinyl or print it onto your paper first before you cut it out. You maybe wanna put a little sign down here and print it on paper, trace it, however you wanna do it. There'll be both of those files for you. The PNG you can use in your electronic cutting machines. You're just gonna to have to clean it out a little bit. Anyway, you can see here I cut mine out in vinyl, and so just taking that transfer paper off the top, really, really super cute. Now I'm going to use some of this macrame cord from Dollar Tree and some wood beads also from Dollar Tree. And I'll put two beads on each uh, end of our macrame cord here. And then I'm going to take that cord together where I want it, hold it together, and then tie one big knot with both strands together. Looks really, really cute. I love how vintage it looks. And then I'm going to tie a knot at the end where I want my beads to rest so they don't fall off and cut off the excess. And then I'll kind of smush the little macrame cord at the bottom of that knot there. Give it a little something fun. And then bringing in some Gorilla Glue here and that frame. I bet you forgot about that frame, didn't we? We're using this because we're going to glue it on the back of our tag to help it stand up. And that makes this project complete.
Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I will have a link down in the description box. This is another kit from craftingwithkimber.com. Um, I dreamed up that I wanted a chunky carrot that could stand on end like this. It's made out of half inch wood and my friend Kim made a little kit for us. So we got a 12 inch long carrot with a little extra piece for the greenery on top. This turns out so cute. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And then with the kit comes a little tag You'll also get a chunky wood heart. Mine isn't chunky, but a chunky one that can sit on its end and then a tiny little heart. You have lots of little pieces to play with, however you want to do it. This cute little flower. And then this little bunny, It remember, I have a picture inserted here of the bunny that we did in one of my last videos. She made it in the exact shape of that bunny. So cute. Look how tiny it is. And then this other bunny shape that comes with it, this is a set. You can see it in the picture here, the whole set here of one that Kim did on her Facebook Live page. So it's the exact shape of that bunny. And I thought it was so cute. So we have these cute two tiny little bunnies that come with the kit. And then two chunky flowers that set on in just like the heart will do. They'll set up just like this. Okay, and the heart will do the same thing. All right, so for my care, I'm going to use some fabric on this. So I'm going to use this duck cloth fabric and get from Walmart. This uh, fabric I believe I got from Hobby Lobby, but I know Dollar Tree has some green fabric, Walmart does, and some of this kind of orange fabric I got from Dollar Tree. So whatever you want to use for it. But with this kind of a drop cloth type uh, duck cloth fabric from Walmart, I'm just tracing around my carrot. And then I'm coming in just like I do with the paper on the last tag. I'm coming in about a quarter inch and I'm redrawing my perimeter here, my pattern perimeter of my carrot and then that's what I'm going to cut out so that a little bit of our wood of our carrot shows. Okay, because otherwise, as I always say, why do I sit and paint these and paint the wood items in this and that if I'm not going to show a little bit of it? So I always, when I use paper and uh, fabric and things like that and I'm gluing them down onto wood, I just always like a little bit of my wood perimeter to show. It's just my preference. You don't have to. And you don't even have to use fabric here. You can just completely paint the whole thing and just sand it, distress it, have a farmhouse look, use paper. Anyway, so there you can see what the carrot looks like, what the carrot top looks like cut out, and my little piece of orange fabric for my tag. So I'm going to come in with just kind of that same green paint I used in the first project. All the paints today are basically uh, the paint colors the same as what you know, we're going to be using across the board on all three projects today. Just going to do a light coat here, painting it. I'm painting the whole thing because the fabric, both fabric, well, not the white fabric. The green fabric's a little thin. The orange fabric's a little thin, so you're going to be able to see the wood below it. So I'm going ahead and painting each, like, whole piece, the tag and the greenery for the carrot top because you're going to see the fabric through it. And then I'm painting the little bunnies here as well. That color, again, is drop cloth, Dixie Belle chalk paint. And then I'm painting my whole carrot just because I felt like it. You can't see it but underneath the fabric, but I just felt like painting the whole carrot. I'll paint the back as well completely so that it's all finished off. And I'm using a little light pink paint here just to kind of paint my little uh, heart and my flower here. I like here that you get different pieces in the kit. Um, and then you can decide what you want to use. And I don't even use the chunky flowers for this. I like want to save them for something else. But just lots of fun little additives in here so you can decide what you want to use. And I'm just coming in, just showing you a little bit here. I'm going to sand around all the edges of my wood pieces and stuff just to distress it up a little bit. Show you a little bit on the carrot here. Up close, I'll freeze it for a moment. There you go. So you can just see that little bit of a distressed edge. Okay. And you don't have to do this part if you don't want. And then, of course, I'm going to bring my fabric to my sewing machine and just stitch around it just to give it a little something. And if you wanted kind of a stitch look, you could take a really fine, fine Sharpie marker, black or a white or in different colors. Sharpie comes in all different colors and make little stitch lines. And you can do the same when you do papers if you want that stitch look. Here's what it looks like sewing all the way around. And it's already kind of fraying around the edges. I want to leave that there because I want it to have that rustic look. Right, so here's my greenery, what it looks like. Sewed on it, frayed around the edges. My little piece of fabric I sewed on. And I mix up some of that terracotta paint with water so it's a little bit runny. And using my fan brush and tapping it and adding some splatters on my carrots. Mixed up a little bit of that pink with water so I can splatter my bunnies. 
and then you splatter my little heart and my flower and then I'm going to go ahead and use my beacon fabric tack glue and glue down my pattern pieces or my fabric pieces now I'm only trying to glue around the edges because like this fabric is so thin and I don't want that fabric tack to like leak through and be seen like a wet spot Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue the greenery to the top here. I love that it's an extra piece on the top because it just gives it that 3D look. I'm going to glue my fabric down here on the carrot. And then when I glue it down, I'm going to kind of just pick up the edges a little bit so that it just looks a little bit more frayed and worn around the greenery and on the carrot itself, just so it kind of sticks up a little bit. Just preference. Here's what that looks like. I think we're looking so rustic and farmhouse here. And then I add, I'm going to, I made a teeny tiny little iron on out of vinyl. You could probably just write it on with a Sharpie marker. I didn't make a little printable for it because it's so tiny, you guys. It's like one inch by one inch. But I'm not really great with my handwriting. So, you know, I used vinyl and ironed it on. And then I'm going to glue my little fabric piece onto the tag. And then I'm going to glue my one little tiny heart onto my little crooked ear bunny here. Super cute. And I'm going to use some twine here from Dollar Tree. Just tie it into a little bow. And I'm going to kind of put that little bit... I was going to have it straight under the greenery, but I cited a little cattywampus. One of these wood squares, again, to put under the tag so that the tag lifts up against the knot of the bow and it looks even with the knot of the bow. And then when I glue my flower there, it'll lay even on the tag. So gluing my bow kind of up in the corner versus right up under that greenery. And then glue my wooden tag down here. Again, you can use some cardboard. And then glue my flower right over that knot and that tag. And everything will lay level. And I'm going to cut my twine where I want to cut it. And I'm going to glue my little bunnies onto each end of the twine as if I was going to use wood beads. I thought that would be a fun little thing and show off those bunnies. And then once I do that, that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number three. For this project, again, from Dollar Tree, I'm going to use these little bunny wreath things. I'm going to use three of them. Perfect size for what we need. And now I'm going to use two of these chunky slat boards from Dollar Tree. One is 10 inches, one is 12 inches long. You could use scrap wood if you want to. And then these, uh, it's a three-piece word set also from Dollar Tree, the word bunny. And I'm going to just... As you can see here, use some nice heavy-duty scissors and just cut that little wreath portion off of all three of the bunnies. I'll save that wood because I might be able to use it to layer and stuff like I did the little wood squares. might be able to use that for layering or something at some point later on. This is the scrapbook paper I'm going to use for my bunnies. And I'm going to show one here, but I'm just going to trace around all three bunnies. And of course, I'm going to come in and I'm going to redraw that perimeter again because we all know I like my wood to show a little bit around the edges. And then that's the pattern I'll cut out. And I'll do all that off camera. We've already seen me do it. There it is sitting up there at the top of my uh, paper cutter all ready to go. And I'm cutting some green cardstock to fit both of my signs here. Again, uh, allowing a little bit of wood to show around the perimeter. I think this turns out so super cute. The idea I had in my mind. I just love how it turned out. Again, the colors I chose adds a little bit of a vintage vibe to me, and that's okay. Bringing in that uh, Dixie Belle drop cloth and a little bit of kind of peach paint. I use this terracotta and some of that drop cloth to make it like a peach color, and I'm going to use this Waverly Antique Wax. Now, you don't have to do this part, but this wood is so light, and when I put that drop cloth paint on it and then try to sand off the edges you don't really see the wood very well because it's light paint against light wood so i thought i'll paint over the top with that dixie bell uh drop cloth paint um then sand around the edges 
here I am painting around over the top of that stain. Then you're going to just see a little bit of that brown edge perimeter around the paint. And I think that just gives it a little something. But you don't have to do that, and especially if you don't want to sand the edges or anything like that. I just occasionally bring this out and do it this way just to give it a little something extra. I'll just show a little bit of the painting on the bunnies and a little bit of painting on my signs. You can see a carrot right up above the bunny on the left there. I was going to use a carrot in my project and I decided not to. So you'll see that laying there from time to time, even painted, but the carrot gets nixed. <laughs> Paint my little heart here. And this heart, uh, I'll bring in two more hearts later. These hearts are from craftingwithkimber.com and I'll have a link for those in the description box for you. And then I'm bringing in my little uh, homemade peachy paint here. Again, that terracotta with some drop cloth, making a little lighter, painting my bunny word, and then coming in with some pam pa pam paper, <laughs> sandpaper and distress everything up. Just show a little distressing here. The rest I'll do off camera. Look, see, there's my carrot all painted. Just decided I didn't want the carrot. That's okay. You might want carrots. And here's my board all sanded and distressed. Can you see that little bit of brown around the edges there? And I'll show you here up on the other side. You can see it a little bit more better. I just think it just gives it a little vintage look. That's all. That's why I did that little bit of stain there with that uh, wax. And then I'm coming in just to show you I did it and, you know, go ahead and sewing all my papers again for this project around my strips for the sign and around uh, my bunnies. I like how these bunnies turned out really, really cute. Again, perfect side for our uh, little slapboard signs here. I'll show you what this looks like. Here you go. Really cute. And then, of course, you all know it, open into my scissor blades, coming in to scrape along the edges. You could be really light-handed, really heavy-handed here, whatever you like. If you just, I think that sanding just allows that paper, and I say this a lot too, but, you know, that's what you get for being with me so long. <laughs> for my new people, it allows that paper to kind of just pop up off that wood a little bit. And then, of course, my watered-down drop cloth paint I used earlier. I'm going to use it again here and add some splatters to my papers bunnies i don't know spring things just call for splatter mm -hmm. my bunny word here and my heart you can see my carrot has even gotten further with the painting that i don't end up using i did little pink splatters on the white hearts here and here again is another printable for you now i did this three different ways for you so the cottontail farm i printed by itself if you just want the words cottontail farm and you want to put it on one sign okay if you have the bunny words I printed Cottontail and Farm separately so you could use it on two signs as I'm doing it, okay? And if you don't have the bunny words, I printed this for, again, for two signs or one big sign all together so that you have that option as well, okay? I'm going to go ahead and glue my papers down here. I'm gluing front and back. I glued the papers onto the back side, okay? And then the papers on the front, I haven't glued down yet. I forgot I cut papers for the back side of my signs, too. So the back side of my signs are what's glued down. The front sides, I'm waiting to glue those down. And as you can see here, I'm getting the papers on my bunnies glued down. And then here's where I come in, decide I don't want the carrot. I'm going to do two more hearts. Again, I'll have the link to these hearts in the description box for you. So if you go and order that cute carrot set, you might want to order some of these heart sets. And then I'm going to splatter it with our watered-down peach paint here. And then, of course, sand around the edges in distress so it looks like that very first heart we painted. And then I'm going to come in and just add some glue to the bottom half of my word. Still, my paper's not glued down. I just need to get my bunny word in place. And I don't glue my paper down because if I glue my paper down and I don't wait long enough for the glue to dry and then I try to put my vinyl down, for some reason my vinyl will not stick underneath the onto the paper because the glue underneath is wet so I have to get my vinyl down first and then glue if I glue then I gotta wait 15 20 minutes before I put my vinyl on weirdest thing anyway then I'll go ahead and get that paper glued down and then the cottontail here I decided the words were too white so I come in with that splatter and I'm gonna just splatter right over the vinyl word and I do the other word off camera I'll show you what this looks like here in a minute. There we go. See, it just looks a little better with just a little bit of splatter on it. Even though it's kind of the same color, it just gives it something. Go ahead and glue that paper down and put my signs together here so I can see where I want to put my hearts. I'll kind of let them hang off of that bottom sign a little bit. 
and where it's touching the top sign, but I don't glue it onto that top sign. And then now here, um, because I wasn't sure at that point whether I was going to glue the signs together, but then in the end I do glue them together. But anyway, um, I was just drew where the top bunny was going to lay on the bottom two bunnies so I would know where to put the glue. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that top bunny down. And then the top bunny, so there's space on the bunnies on the side, right? So I'm adding some uh, coffee stir sticks here. Two coffee stir sticks was too thick so I had a coffee stir stick and cardboard on top so that I have the two bottom bunnies are level against that top bunny and it gives me gluing surface to glue to my sign so I hope that's understandable okay add some glue there and it's some more glue on my bunny and now I'm going to glue that to the back of my top sign about oh a half inch from the bottom let that set up for a bit. And here's where I decide I'm going to go ahead and glue that top sign to the bottom sign right on top. So cute, cute, cute. And then I'm going to end with that last little heart as my bunny tail for that top bunny. And that makes this project complete. So I really hope you like how these projects turned out today. I like how a couple of them turned out kind of vintage just with the paper colors I chose. And then the other one was like a, this rustic farmhouse. So, but you know, you of course make it any style you want. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really, really, really helps my channel to grow. And you know the routine. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. If you walked in here for the first time and you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Remember, I'll have the link down below to my blog for free printables to help you with your projects. And I'll have the links to the uh, products and you know, cute carrot kit from craftingwithkimber.com down in my description box below as well if you'd like to go get those things for yourself. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with two things. Number one, I'm going to have a link to a Christian music video down below if you want to just, you know, take a little time, breathe in a little Jesus, and just focus on him for a few minutes, find your peace. Click on that link and listen to it. I think you'll enjoy it. And two, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. It's important to understand that hearing God's voice answer your prayers takes a heart filled with love and humility. It takes ears that are willing to listen to what God is wanting to say to you. It takes a mind that is receptive toward his spirit. And it takes eyes to look up and see that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and can do anything you might ask of him if it's in accordance with his will. But you must also have faith in God who gave you life. The situation that you are facing can only be one if your faith truly believes that God can bring you to the finish line. Will it happen quickly? I hope so. But if not, you must remain strong and stand firm on the solid rock when times are tough. You must not allow the enemy to destroy your hopes of healing. You must not allow him to plant a seed in your mind that God doesn't care, that God isn't listening, that you aren't good enough of a person, because that's a lie. God cares for you and God loves you. You are worth everything to him. He died for you and with his grace, your situation can be healed. So open your arms and receive all he has for you. Be ready to walk with him and allow him to guide you. Keep your faith and don't give up. Lift your head and breathe in his grace and healing. With your faith, you will hear God and with his love, you will get through this. So take heart. With God, you will overcome and you will win your race. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.